<laughs> I hope so, <laughs> Jack. I'll disagree with you there. I, I, I've seen no Republicans uh, in my lifetime that have deserved to be governor in this state over the governor, Democrats we've elected. Well, that, uh, that could be debatable. <laughs> uh, for a last question before you all make a closing statement or anything, uh, I'm going to put you both to see if you will predict anything. Who will be the Democrat nominee for governor if this um, amendment fails? I knew he was going to ask that. If it fails? Mm -hmm. I find that hard to say. There, there are a lot of potential governors, and, and I, I haven't been able this far ahead to predict it right in the last few years. I think very few people would have thought that John Y. Brown would have been the nominee. In fact, I went to his wedding in March on St. Patrick's Day, and nobody had any idea. And one week later, he was an, he was an announced candidate for governor. <laughs> Six weeks later, he was the nominee. Uh, I think that it's going to be a wide open situation uh, if it fails. And uh, very likely would be a wide open situation if it passed, in my personal opinion. I don't know that the governor would, would run for election. Uh, a lot of speculation that he might be interested in, a, in other office. So uh, uh, I think it'd be wide open, whichever way it goes. Well, and that speculation of that other office, where it well, a lot of people talk about what office for would president. that be? I, a lot of people talk about running for president. I doubt if John Wayne himself knows what he would want to run for at that time. Yeah, I've heard that, and I couldn't yeah. believe it that, yeah. that he's thinking. Jack, well, that, that was spoken like a true and successful politician without uh, getting himself in trouble. But without giving any of my personal preferences, I'll just give you four or five names and let it go with that. Uh, Martha Lane Collins, if, this, if it fails. Governor Collins, Harvey Sloan, Bill Kenton, uh, Tracy Farmer, Alvin Barkley, and many others, if it fails. And I believe your nominee may come from one of those. Governor Carroll again. Well, gentlemen, if you'd like to make a closing statement, uh, our time's run out. So, Governor, would you like to make a closing statement on the undecided? I vote? want to express my appreciation to the media, all the media, and certainly to Cable 10, uh, for making your facilities available to all of us on both sides of this issue and this campaign to discuss the issue. I think, as I said in my opening statement, the real issue is the opportunity that the voters and the people have to gain additional power and influence over the selection of the nominees and the, and the candidates for governor, lieutenant governor, statewide officials, and sheriff. Uh, I feel this very fundamentally. I have confidence and trust in the voters. I think they, they're much wiser and much more perceptive than a lot of us in political life give them credit. And when we distrust the voter and attempt to limit their power, we're doing a great disservice to the system which made this country great, that we fought a revolution for. The federal constitution guarantees that right of the voter to have that choice. The 1891 constitution took away that right and limited our choice, and I have the, I, the greatest faith that the people of Kentucky at long last will remove those handcuffs and those restrictions on our opportunity to vote and choose our candidates. Thank you. The citizens of Franklin and Franklin County are among the most astute in this country. Most of you have already made your minds up, and hopefully this hour has shed some light on the subject, so I'm not going to give a closing statement to my side. However, I will say to you that this election is going to be close, and whether you're for or against this amendment, the fact that you vote and your family and friends vote is very important. This election may be decided, one way or the other, by less than the margin of defeat or victory in Franklin County. So I urge you to go to the polls on Tuesday to take your spouses, your children, and to call your friends and family. This is extremely important. My thanks to Jim Fraley and Governor Breathitt. I've enjoyed it. Let me just say one thing, not on the issue, Jim. Uh, Francis and my children said when I, they found out I was going to be on your program, just tell everybody in Franklin County and all of your viewers, hello, we sure do miss all of you. Well, is there any possibility that uh, Governor Breathitt might run? No, no, <laughs> no, no I, I, I'm out of that, but I sure do enjoy coming back to Franklin County. Okay, gentlemen, I'd like to thank you, Governor Breathitt. Thank you for taking your time, being with us. We know you're a busy man. 
and uh, I really appreciated uh, the time with you. And Thank I'm, you for giving me such a uh, tough and able uh, opponent. Yeah. <laughs> and Jack, uh, it's always nice to have you here, and I know you drove all the way back from Atlanta just to be on this program, but uh, I'd like to thank both of you again. And as Jack said, the most important thing is for you to get out and vote tomorrow morning. For Cable 10, this is Jim Fraley saying good night. Governor.